Okay, so now we're back, and um, I've rearranged all of these into the correct order. Okay, so I'm hoping that you haven't had too much trouble with that. It's just a little bit fiddly, that's all. Okay, so now we've got that going, and um, that's all looking pretty good. So we'll just do a quick RAM preview of that, and that's the effect in real time. If you feel this is um, a bit slow, the, uh, the easy thing you can always do is, with that layer selected, hit U, and you can move this keyframe forwards or backwards. Moving it closer to the front one is going to make the whole thing a lot quicker. Alright, so this is probably a pretty cool effect, but there's there's an element of the original logo which I, I kind of liked about this, sort of the different colours and shades in it as opposed to just the silhouette. Alright, so what we're going to try and do is bring that one back in there. Now if we haven't uh, deleted this, this should still be here. The only trouble is now with this white uh, stroke around the outside, the text is a little bit strange looking. So we're just going to apply a bit of um, transformation to that to make it uh, a little bit more suited to its new surroundings. Okay, so with the effects and presets thing, just type invert and then double clicking on that, making sure you still have that selected. Okay, so that's looking pretty cool. And um, as much as I, I do like the blue shade anyway, I think the uh, the orange, in my own opinion, is a nicer colour. So, let's go over here. So typing hue there. Now with this layer selected, double clicking on that, and that's going to bring this one up. Now that is changing the master hue, which we can move around to all these things, change that to one to 180. Okay, so now we have the original colour of the uh, the rabbit there, but the actual text is a probably more suitable colour for the background that we're doing. Okay, so that's looking pretty cool like that. Now while we're at it, how about we create a new solid, and we're going to make that one into a background. So dragging that one right down to the bottom, and back onto this effects thing here, type ramp. Double clicking on that to apply it to here of course. Now changing this one to radial ramp, and then changing your end colour to black and the start colour. Okay, we're going to start it off with orange, but I'm thinking it's probably a bit too harsh, so we might just drag it down a little bit. Now it's simply a case of just moving these around until you find a, uh, a nice shade that you like. I think that's pretty good like that. So that's the background and the main part of that done. Okay, so the next part is we're going to be having a look at animating this backwards part. Okay, now what I did in the in the uh, example which I showed you is actually had, as this area was outlining itself, the background was actually filling up, almost like it was a liquid or something like that. Okay, so we're going to do that part again. So if we go all the way back to the start here, with this one selected, go up to the rectangle tool here, and then select, or basically just drag a simple rectangle like this. And this is going to mask off the layer, and what we want to do is move this one so it's just in front of that, like that. So letting go of that, that's nice, and now we've completely lost our logo. So what we have to do is select that, and then twirl that one down, and keyframe the mask path. Now if we move ourselves forward uh, to the end of our transition, which is at 5 seconds, what we can do is, if we go up here and select the selection tool, we can grab a hold of this, double clicking on the mask, and then just dragging that all the way out like that. And then ending it just after the end like that. Okay, hitting enter to confirm that. And now what you've got is you've got a filling in stroke like that. Now the only trouble is, is it looks a bit strange, especially in this area, how it's filling up without there any layer around it. So that's just simply a case of offsetting these. So we'll just grab both of these, and then we'll have a look at the point in which we'd like to start filling it up, probably about here, and then we'll move that one forward. Now holding down shift will allow you to snap to the current time like that. Okay, so now with that on like that, you'll notice that we're now filling up the outlines after they've been outlined themselves, which is a lot better. Okay, so that's all, essentially all there is to the actual effect. Now, what I did in the end, if you have a look at this other example, was um, I had this sort of slightly uh, 
rough looking distressed glow around the outside. Okay, so I'll just quickly go through how I did that. Alright, now with the uh, Killer Rabbit thing, now let's just twirl up these effects because we don't need to worry about them anymore. Let's go across here and type Glow. Okay, so double clicking on that. And we're going to be getting Glow there. Now let's change this to just to the Alpha channel. And then this is the case of moving some of these around. Essentially just moving that like that. Okay, so what we're really after at the moment is getting this um, feathering that's happening around the outside. What we don't want is this part to be filled in. So under here, Composite Original, change that one to on top. So as you can see, what we've got is essentially just a uh, an outline there with a, a glow around it. So once we've done that, making sure this is changed to Alpha Channel, go down here and let's change both of these colours to the orange. So one like that, and the other one like that. Now, like, like you're probably finding at most stages in this tutorial, you can probably stop here and it would still look quite cool. Getting this uh, orange glow happening around the text, which looks quite nice. Now, the final thing which I did do in this is apply a roughen edges. Okay, so let's um, make sure we select that, double click that. Okay, we haven't got a lot of space here, so I'm just going to twirl up the glow. Okay, and um, essentially I just left this on its default settings, which um, looks quite cool. And uh, as you'll find, it's the rough and edges works by looking at the alpha channel of that particular layer, and then just putting some random roughening around it. So without the actual glow, it's a, a lot less because the edge is a lot cleaner, whereas with the glow, the alpha channel is slightly blurred for this particular layer, which is what gives it the uh, interesting part there. Now the final thing which I did do is I um, put an expression on the evolution. The evolution is the part, which as you can see there, it's uh, moving around what actually gets roughened up. So if we hold down Alt and click on the stopwatch, it's going to open the expression controls. Now don't worry if, um, if you're new to expressions or you're not quite sure what they are, this one's really simple. Okay, so just type time in lowercase, and then times, or in this case an asterisk, 250. And what this is essentially saying is, whatever our time value is, which in this case would be 1 point whatever seconds, multiply that value by 250, and then that will tell you what the evolution is. So hitting enter, and as you can see, there's a slight variation in, the, uh, in what's actually going on which just helps to give it a little bit more animation. Now, um, it's not quite as filled in as far as the other one, so what we can do is we can go back up to the glow and we can adjust the, the radius there, which is um, looking quite good, and then adjusting the intensity a bit as well. Alright, so that's um, essentially all there is to the effect. So, um, yeah, we'll just do a final RAM preview, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So there we have it. It's uh, It looks quite effective and it's fairly straightforward once you know the general process behind it. Alright, so best of luck creating this for yourself and uh, make sure you leave a comment if you like it or if you have any trouble doing anything and I can try and explain a little bit further. Okay, so this is Ben from Vibrancy Design.